praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean death of happy rest. of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. The Lord is your keeper. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. Time, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. Receive our heartfelt cry. 
pray. Heavenly Father, during his earth, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the word and sacrifice, into our hearts such love toward you that we may live eternally through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from Lamentations chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust, there may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes, and let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How I will search the Lord his judgments and how I will his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints, and this, not as we expected. But they gave themselves first to the Lord, and, by, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that he had started so that he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, in our love for you, see that you excel in this, fact of, in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I did not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, and there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Jesus is the Christ, the Son. 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that, so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John and the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went it in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of our Lord. We heard the word of our Lord. Let us confess together our common faith as expressed in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He sundered into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let me see as we continue with the hymn of the day, which is found in the hymnal number 548.
my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We heard from the Old Testament reading from Lamentations, it is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So these words were spoken at a time when Jerusalem had been conquered. It had been ransacked, the temple had been torn down, much of the people had been taken off into captivity, into exile and much of the city itself had been just burned up. So the people now, they were lament lamenting. Lamentation was written by the prophet Jeremiah, who is with the people, he's grieving, he's expressing this great sorrow. They're calling on God, God, these terrible things have happened to us, yes, we deserved it, but we call upon you to restore us. When can we come back? Lord, when we come back here and rebuild the temple, come back to the holy city of Jerusalem? Well, they don't get an immediate answer. The people wait. In fact, it would be decades where they'd have to wait for the salvation of the Lord. Now, we can all, most of us, know what it is to wait. We call on the Lord and we wait for an answer, and it seems like it takes Him a long, long time to answer. We also know what it's, wait, what it's wait like, to, like to wait around here for waiting in line for something, or you're waiting for this appointment that you thought was supposed to be two hours ago. You're waiting for news about that test result. But it's a little bit different waiting for the Lord. When the things we wait for here, we can see where we stand in line. We can ask for an update as to where, when's this gonna happen? You promised then, when, when's it really going to happen? But with the Lord, we don't have that sense. Now we, we assume that there's no such thing as a line with the Lord because, because He can attend to all things, as many things as He wants, all over the place, any, anytime, anywhere, any number of people. But still we don't know just where do we stand when he, in, his, in terms of Him going to answer to us. He tells us very clear in Scripture that our time is not His time, His time is not our time. So we want to wait, we try to wait, but the question is, can we wait quietly? We're told here to, it's good to wait quietly for the Lord for His salvation, but it's difficult. We get frustrated sometimes, we may even want to give up. It requires patience, it requires divine help divine help from our Lord so that we can wait quietly. In our gospel reading this morning, we had two healings that involved waiting. We see Jesus, Jesus out there and he's addressing large crowds. At this point, Jesus is fairly popular. So these large crowds coming to see, to hear him talk and, to, and to maybe see a miracle, is what many of them are hoping for, to see a miracle. So one of these days, Jesus is out there teaching and up com comes up to him this synagogue ruler. We're told his name was Jairus. Now he's an important per person in this community and he's a teacher of the law and he's very much involved in the community and the synagogue. And he's been told by the other religious leaders that he should be skeptical about Jesus. So it's very difficult for him to come up and approach Jesus. It's a lot of, he's got to swallow a lot of humble pie to come up to Jesus. But his daughter is dying. So he's desperate. He's out of hope. So he comes to Jesus looking for some hope. And the Lord offers him some and says, okay, we'll go and I'll lay my hands on your daughter. 
So they go on, and the great crowd follows along. They want to see, is there something spectacular going to happen here that we want to see? So they're going along, though. There's also in this crowd a woman who's been suffering for 12 years. She's had a bloody discharge for 12 years. She's gone to many physicians. She's called on the Lord, and there's been no healing. Understand that she is unclean, not by the laws of the Pharisees, but by God's law. In Leviticus and in the book of Deuteronomy, she is declared unclean and should not be in this crowd. But she is there because she is desperate. She's not been able to be healed. In fact, she's getting worse. She goes and comes able to get close to Jesus somehow, and she touches his garment. And she thinks and she says, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And she is. She's healed instantly just from touching Jesus' garments. Of course, Jesus knows that something's happened. He says some power has gone out from him. Even in this pressing crowd, disciples are kind of amazed. Jesus, what are you looking around for somebody touching you? Everybody's kind of running into you, and they're running into one another. Finally, the woman comes up and she confesses. And Jesus doesn't rebuke her. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. A more direct translation of that would be, your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. He commends her faith, and he's worked this miracle of healing her, and also the faith of bringing her to faith. But the miracle of bringing her to faith. But what is this faith? What is it in? She's not, not, we don't see that she's a follower of Jesus. This seems to be her first contact with him. She doesn't know much about him other than he's healed, done some spectacular miracles. And, and what has she done to be committed for her faith? Well, she's done nothing but wait 12 years. Wait 12 years for the salvation of the Lord. While this is going on, while Jesus is delayed at healing this unclean woman, Jairus, the synagogue ruler, gets word that his daughter has died. And Jesus, of course, knows this. He says, he says, over here what they said, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Now this is going to be tough for Jairus. He's got a further dilemma here. Because Jesus has come in contact with an unclean woman, Jesus is now unclean. By the laws of the God, Deuteronomy and Leviticus, Leviticus again, he need, he's unclean until sundown, until he goes through the ritual purification rites. But he tells Jairus, just no fear, just believe, only believe. So they all head off. He, Jesus gets the crowd to hang back, and he takes with him just James, John, and, and, and Peter, and Jesus and Jairus, and they head off to, to Jairus' house. When they get there, there, there's a great commotion going on. They're now wailing and moaning. They're, doing, they're getting ready for a funeral, for the funeral procession. And Jesus says to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Well, she's physically dead. Luke tells us that her spirit has left. But with Jesus, it's just the same thing as if she was asleep. It's like for us being waking up from sleep, for Jesus waking someone from the dead, it's just as easy for him. Death is no barrier for him. Taking her by the hands, he says to her, Talithi kumi, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up at once. While Jesus was delayed, it seemed that all was lost. But death and time are a barrier for us. They're not a barrier for the Lord, not a barrier at all. Jesus commends a faith. He says only believe, and he commends the woman for her faith. This faith includes waiting, waiting for the salvation of our Lord, Wait, knowing and trusting in what we see here, that he has the power over death. What we have going on here with the raising of this little girl from the dead, yeah, it definitely shows us the power of the Lord over death, but it's also a picture of his return, a picture when he will return and he will tell all of us to arise, to arise from the dead, and we will arise and come out from those tombs. But for now, we wait. Scripture tells us, in Lamentations 3, verse 25, the Lord, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Seeking and waiting, they go together. There are a lot of circumstances that are uncontrollable for us. We can't control the weather. There are people who are unchangeable. We would like to change, we just can't. It's my way or no way at all. There are problems that are unexplainable, and many times life is just unfair. We might try to control it all by any means we can find. We certainly worry about things. We may try to avoid circumstances and people that, that are uncontrollable to us. And there are times when, when we just complain and whine. Instead of, of rise and shine, it's rise and whine. Now, how do you hear what the Lord's answering when you call upon him when you're whining all the time? Well, you can't. We also like to blame others. I'm the victim. It's somebody else's fault. It's your fault. Or we blame God. God, it, it's your fault. Why did you allow this to happen? and then we start to turn away from the Lord. But look what it said there in Lamentations. When we call on the Lord and we have to wait for His salvation, it's the time to seek Him. He honors those that are seeking Him. It's time to seek the Lord. Seek the will of the Lord as we pray, Thy will be done. Scripture encourages to wait with patience. 
Romans, the eighth chapter, says, If we have hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The fruit, one of the fruit of the Spirit is patience. Patience and self-control. It all go in with waiting for the salvation of the Lord. This word in the New Testament Greek that, that's patience, this fruit of the Spirit, patience, it's a compound word, macrothumia. Now we know that word macro, we use that. It, it, we use it to mean big, or in this case probably it's better to say is long, meaning long. And thumia has to do with temperature, or, or heat, if you will. And it, so in fact it's kind of saying long, hot suffering. Now it doesn't mean that we're gonna, patience is suffering for a long time. What it means is you're slow to overheat. It's, you're, it's a long time before you overboil. Over you just don't overboil automatically. Patience is holding it all back, so we don't overboil or overheat too quickly. We wait with this patience, knowing that who is in control, the Lord is in control, and that He is working things out. And what does He give the Spirit to us? He gives the Spirit to help direct us, the Spirit to even take over and redirect our prayers if, if necessary. Scripture encourages us to wait expectantly, to wait confidently, being certain that it's not, it's not a matter of if he'll, it's, it's not a matter of if he'll, it's when he will hear us, when he will hear us, and when he will, who will give us that salvation that he's promised to us. There was occasion we, we have in, in Matthew, the ninth chapter, where there were two blind people, and they were adults, and they had been blind for a long time. They had been waiting for the Lord to heal them, to bring some restoration to their sight. They approached Jesus when they heard that he was coming by that area. And they had somebody bring him to him. And they come to Jesus and they say, Lord, will you give us our sight? Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it done to you. It's not according to your wish. Or I hope this happens. It's trust. It is according to your faith, your trust. Trust in the Lord that he can and that he will. When you call on the Lord and it seems you have to wait for him, do you believe that he can answer? Do you believe that he will answer? Do you expect an answer? Do you trust in his timing? Do you have faith in his timing? You know, sometimes when it looks like, the, or sounds like you think the Lord's not answering you, maybe there's a delay, maybe it's because you're not ready. Lord, we, Lord, I need help with this financial problem. And if he gave us a windfall, what would happen? It would just probably make things worse. If he would give us that healing immediately, what would happen? We would end up, then turn away from the Lord, forget about him, and go off and, and start spending more time on ourselves, on our own happiness, if you will. I can, uh, I can relate to this woman who had to wait these 12 years for this healing and also understand, get some understanding of, of the Lord's timing. For many, many years, for like 25 years, I struggled with some intestinal issues. And I went to the doctors, was hospitalized a couple times for losing a lot of weight. Never got better. Nothing. In fact, it seemed to be getting worse all the time. Now, during that time period, I'd kind of stray. I had strayed away from the Lord. Turned away from the Lord. Oh, I'd call upon Him every once in a while, particularly to, Lord, will You heal me? Get rid of this. And then most of the time, just just turned away from the Lord. It was a, a lost, stray sheep, if you will. Eventually, the Lord called me back. Called me back. To, I was one of those lost sheep. One of the, the lost. The, he left the 99 to come, sought me out, and brought me back to faith. Then later on, while it, shortly after that, when, after he was in seminary, he gave me, the, he showed me, he revealed to me, as all I had to do was avoid eating wheat. Avoid eating wheat, just simply avoid eating wheat, and all those issues would take care of themselves. Wasn't healed, but given this workaround, if you will. Now, if I had known that, if that had occurred to me much, much earlier, while I was turned away from the Lord before I was in faith, well, I would have worked harder at my secular job. Would never end up in seminary, would never come back and spend more time with my family, would never have spent more time teaching the Lord, learning from the Lord, turning to the Lord all the time. His timing is always right. He delays because he knows what is the perfect time, what is the right time. We're the ones with the time problems. We wait for the Lord, we, we seek Him, we, we are certain that He will answer, we trust we, that He will answer, we trust that His timing is right no matter what the circumstances are. It says in Lamentations 3, verse 26, it's good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Well, quietly doesn't mean doing nothing. It means to prepare, not with complaining, but to prepare, prepare for the answer as we seek his, his answer. Seek it in a positive way. It says in Psalm 25, verse 5, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you, are, for you I wait all the day long. How does he teach us and lead us in the truth? Well, it's through the word. It's through the prayer. It's through coming together in his worship service. It's, for turning to, it's from turning to other Christians who've experienced something very similar. 
while you're waiting for the Lord and, and examining, examining yourself as to what are you waiting for? Just what is it I'm waiting for? Is what I'm asking of the Lord and I'm waiting for this, is it in line with His promises? Is it in line with how He would direct me by the Spirit, how He would direct me in, in His Word? You remember, though, that He's already answered all of our greatest needs. He's already answered all our greatest needs with, with His all-sufficient grace. We read from Lamentations 3, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We don't have to wait for His love and His mercy. He's already given that to us. He's already given it to us through the Son. He continues to give it to us. It's new every morning. It's without limits. His love and His steadfast love and His mercy are new every morning and they're without limits. We call on Him. We wait on the Lord confidently. We wait on the Lord knowing and trusting that He's already shown His steadfast love and mercy to us. Shown it to us through the Son, who though He was rich, as we read in St. Corinthians, He became poor for us taking our sins on the cross, dying for us, rising again for our salvation so that we may have confidence in Him. And our confidence, you know, it's not in our faithfulness, it's not in our faith, it's in His great faithfulness. Great is His faithfulness. Jeremiah and all the Israelites, as we know from Lamentations in the Bible, that they had to wait 70 years for the Lord to answer that prayer and allow them to come back to Jerusalem. This woman who delayed Jesus had to wait 12 years for her salvation. Jairus, the synagogue ruler, he saw his daughter die while he was waiting for the Lord to heal this unclean woman. We wait for the Lord to answer when we call upon him, and we wait for his return. The return of the one who is promised, do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. You know, when you get down to it, what's a little delay out of all eternity? Well, a little delay while we wait for more and more people to be brought to faith, to trust in the Lord and to call on Him in faith and in confidence. You know, when Jesus returns, we won't remember any kind of waiting at all. It'll all be forgotten. It will all be joyous. It'll all be glory, bask in His glory. Now we wait, but we hold on to Christ. We trust in His promises. We wait expectantly, quietly, and confidently. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Great is His faithfulness. Amen. I mean, that peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. you have brought us into your holy Christian church and made Christ our shield from every enemy. Preserve us in such faith until at last you bring us out of this world in the resurrection forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Father, you have shown to your church the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for our sakes became poor that by his poverty we might become rich. Give us generous hearts that our abundance may supply our fellow saints in their need. Let our preachers serve for the sake of Christ's call, not for earthly gain. Let those who receive excellence in faith, speech, knowledge, and every other gift of God's Word provide richly for the preaching of the gospel and the work of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, your compassion does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men, but your mercies are new every morning. Bestow your steadfast love on every Christian home. Turn parents in kindness to their children. Make children ready in obedience and love toward their parents and each other. Let the young learn discipline and trust in you, and let fathers not exasperate their children, but be devoted to the fear and instruction of the Lord as examples to them. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Almighty God, be with the governing authorities, and enable them to preserve peace and order in our nation. Hear our prayers for our president and governor, our military and police, and other civil servants. Increase the spirit of unity and cooperation among the people of our land and the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you did not turn aside the bold request of Jairus, nor the timid faith of the woman. We implore you, hear our prayers for those in need. Drive away our fears and give us believing faith. Give healing and strength to the sick and suffering. Especially we lift up to you Becky, Tammy, Janice, Tony, Marianne, Barb, Emily, Fred, Mark, Rick, Betty, Joni, Lisa, Kathy, Marguerite, Jim, Joyce, Betty, Laura, Debbie, Stephen, Stephen, Dwayne, Doris, Reverend Rich, Eddie, Luella, Rhonda, Nikki, Wade, Kent, 
Dottie, Dee, Jack, Brad, Adelim, Paula, Becky, Charles, Raymond, Roger, Debbie, Sarita, Vanessa, Sean, Stephanie, Serene, Pastor Lopnow, Douglas, Brandon, Rita, Rodney, Betty, George, Kayla, Jason, Don, Vicki, Joe, Robin, and Will. Lord, in your mercy. Those and whatever else we you would have us ask of you, O God, grant us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you, that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world so we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with him number 809 in the, in the hymnal.
is to cheer and to cry. Spring for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. May be seated. I was not giving any announcements. I do know we're having a um, fellowship meal following as soon as the uh, service concludes here. The, um, do we had a little mix up this morning offerings? Uh, we don't have the playback. I guess we have the playback in the back. You put it back there. Ask it back there. Okay. The, uh, we had a little miss loud all of a sudden. We had a misunderstanding on the Bible study for this morning. The uh, next week is 4th of July, 4th of July falling on a Sunday this year. Is anybody around for Bible study next Sunday morning? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Pardon? You? Okay. Uh, okay, well, well, it's probably best to stick with the schedule. Um, Keep it on track, even though we are just now getting back on to get back to a normal schedule. So we will have a Bible study then at 9:45 in the regular service at uh, 11 a.m. Any other announcements, Corey? Okay, uh, Nancy and I will not be able to stay for the, the fellowship dinner because I've got to get the video up, take it back home, process it, and get it, get it loaded back up, which takes a couple hours to get that, that done. So why don't we rise and we'll have a, a little blessing first. Heavenly Father, we're thankful that, that we were able to come together today and that you brought us your word. Lord, we ask that word may grow up in our hearts to, to well out with, with the love and light of Christ to, to others as we go out into the world. Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to have fellowship together. We thank you for this food and all the provision. We're thankful that you provide all for our true needs, especially providing for our salvation through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together a common prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. And let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. God's blessings to you this week.